On this video, we're going to discuss a Kickstarter action figure line from Four Horsemen Studios, Mythic Legion. Alright guys, here is uh, the action figures I picked up. These guys right here, I just want to point out, these are from the original uh, Mythic Legion line. And this one right here, is us over, it's actually a later line that they released. He is probably available on Big Bad Toy Store. So I, we're going to see if he's actually worth picking up or whatever line. I think initially I want to support this line because it's an independent from the ground up. And you want to support guys like that. You know, you want to support the, the little guy. So we're going to take a look at the packaging from uh, each figure. And we got this orc figure named Uruku. And they got a bio right here. I want to pause it and read that. Not a, bad, not a bad design in the back here. They all have a similar design. Look at that. Very good artwork. Now I'll put this up here if you want to pause. Alright. Got all the other figures in a line. You got a, a dwarves, knights, skeleton dudes, a blue demon, a goblin, a evil knight guy, and a really cool one-eyed barbarian. Got this here, and I got the dwarf. He doesn't have a bio. He's actually what they call a legion builder. The idea is you pick up as much uh, of these guys as possible and make a, an army. So, not too bad. Got a couple of stuff here, and same back, and yeah, you can get the uh, bronze, or the black one, or the silver one. Or you could have if it was not sold out. Sorry. Now you have here, yeah, this guy I was really looking forward to. This is Astronin, Astrion, I'm sorry, Astrion. Yep. Here's his bio. Stop right this, it could pause. And he's pretty cool. And now you got the newer guy. And you got that. Just move up here and show that bio there if you want to pause it. Okay. Now, one thing I want to point out before I go into reviewing the figures. I kind of went a little overboard. I don't know if it's overboard or... I went for the coolest looking guy, not realizing that I should have gone with different body molds, different bucks. So that's... Yeah, I kind of screwed up on that. But I, I'm going to try to uh, rectify that soon. So I'll tell you more about it later on. So we're going to take these guys out of the package and we're going to uh, check out, see how they are. But here they are, out of the packaging. And they're good. They have the potential to be great, and that's the problem I have. I don't think that they're worth the price that they're asking for, especially on Big Bad Toy Store. I got these two guys right here from Big Bad Toy Store, and I got this guy from uh, Soul Horseman's own website. He's a little bit cheaper with, I say a little bit with a caveat, because shipping from them costs about $15. Ouch. He, you know, he costs about roughly $35, $33. I forgot how much it was. I'll have to, I'll let you know a little bit later. Or just put a post right here, wherever. Right here. Put a price tag right here. Good. These two right here cost me $50. And this guy cost me, I would say, $40, $35, dollars So, yeah, we're looking at about close to a hundred dollars here, and for each figure. No, I'm sorry, my mistake. A hundred, well, almost two hundred dollars. My mistake. I don't see two hundred dollars worth of figures here. I don't. I say maybe, maybe, maybe a hundred. A uh, hundred twenty, hundred fifty, maybe, but two hundred. Well, let's, let's go over them, shall we? So we're going to see each sculpt, starting with Urzok here. The sculpt and the paintwork. Let me see if I could just get this staff out. And as you can see, the paint job is pretty good. It feels, doesn't feel cheap-ish. I don't know how to explain it, it's kind of weird. I got the gloves right here. I like the belt work. That's good. Let's see if we can right here. 
good use of, sh uh, of silver. Not bad. Head sculpt right here. If I can pop it out right there, good. Head sculpt's not too bad. Yeah. Just only, only comes in with one head, so not too bad. Go snap right there. Zock. Now we got Kaidor. Like the copper look of the of the helmet here and some of the, the gauntlet. Yeah. See right here, that looks good. Got a little skirt going, a tunic going actually right here. And same kind of type of sculpt, but different paintwork. Not the paint is good and great in some areas. Right in the back here, I'm gonna show you. Right there, right in that hip right here. Do I have a little chip right here? And yeah, that, that's a bit of an issue. And I will say that on the bottom here, and most of them, yeah, got that thing going on here. I'm gonna go with this guy. We're gonna save uh, Ashley on for last. Make sure he's good. This guy right here, all gunmetal. Call him bronze. I don't understand why they call him bronze. I think maybe just because of the, uh, it's better to say bronze than gunmetal, but yeah. But all in all, this looks really good. One solid color. It makes, makes it pretty good. Nice. And last but not least at, the, at all, Astion. Same body, almost the same body as uh, Kador, as you can see right here. Same body, but his head. Let's look at the head skull. Now first, let's, without the head. Oh my God, got it! Oh, no. Got a little, got a little bit of shading here too. That's pretty cool. And then you put on this thing right here. I think you can see a good blend in here, from skin to fur. Not bad at all. I'll put this back on here. Nice idea. I, I like that idea. As you can see, not bad at all. The horns are actually, you know, you can actually move them too. Not bad, I like that. So that is all the uh, paint apps and everything that's good and the sculpt work, really good. I could easily spend $25 just on the sculpt work alone. But let's look at the posability. So I'm gonna show Urzok with the articulation because pretty much there's the same as all three of these guys. Now you got from the bottom, got a good, good range here, and good up, and good right ankle pivot right there. Got a boot swivel right here, a bit of a boot swivel. A single jointed knee right there. And you can see right here a little bit of a, I don't know if I see it right there. This one works, but I thought there was a swivel right here, but yeah, there it is, there you go. A little tight, but yeah, there is a swivel. It's just a bit tight here. And you can see, you can go out this far. Probably can go out further without the, uh, the, the tunic here, but you can see it's not a ball, it's not attached to ball too much, it's just attached to the actual crotch area. Just thing. Anyway, you got here a full rotational waist right here. Bit of a crunch forward like that back that way, so yeah, you can do some dynamic punching pose. Like, and let's go with the wrist right here. This way, this way, it hind gets hindered because of this. And I'm gonna show you. See, that part right there hinders it. I'm kind of disappointed in that. That's not, not ideal. And you got a swivel right here. Could go all the way around if you really want to. Single uh, elbow, kind of a, kind of disappointing with the single elbow because, yeah, yeah. double jointed would have been would have been nice, but then that would have probably co uh, made the figure cost more. All right, and you could go around just in the shoulder and uh, outward this way. Not bad. The head is on a ball, so up, down, left, left. Not too bad. Uh, there is Urzok and pretty much these guys right here. So let's look at the dwarf here. All right, now here is the dwarf. Now let's go up from the bottom. Same type of articulation 
here and here. Then you got the blue swivel right here, the knee bend. A little bit, a little bit more than 90 degrees. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Swivel right here. They go out. It can. This guy can do the splits. That's pretty cool. So I got. That's pretty cool. Same type of diaphragm. It's on a ball peg. And let's get this axe out of the way. And we've got wrist. I got a swivel by the bicep. Got single jointed elbows. This you could take off if you want. So we'll do that and we'll just show you how far it can go out. And then it could go around like so. Same ball peg up down. And some of the accessories can be moved as well. The, each figure is modular. So you could take, if you don't like the bronze on this, you could take bronze off and put the silver on it. Although this would probably be a little bit off. So, you know, you got to mix and match and try, uh, see what, what's best for you. I do believe this is also modular as well. You could put that, put the a black hand on the, the bronze there. It should be fine. And also the accessories on the horns, they come off. Uh, pop these guys out. This one had a problem with this horn because it's just not it's very easy to pull out. Have a seat or a little uh, a belt you can put around them. You can see I have a caterer. The only problem is you got to be really careful how you put them on. I have them with the hammer back here, but I try to get it out right here. Look at them. I'll still keep this on, but the hammer, I love the hammer by the way. Look at this. Nice, good, got a good patina going, that's awesome. I don't have blood on it though, but either way, it looks good. Now, the issue I have with Kador is back here. The strap broke off. Yeah, that broke off. My fault because I had it, had it way up the shoulder here. I think you're supposed to put it down further, so I could do that. Now, in order to do that, let's just get rid of these uh, swords here. And take off his hands, not a big deal. I would put the swords on the hand first, then put it on the arm. That way it won't snap off and doing that. Just your focus all on this too. So make sure you put the, the hands on the sword first. Now, like I said, these guys are modular. You gotta really pop. This guy's kind of tough because <laughs> not only am I trying to do this, but got this thing right here. And I, ew, ew, I don't like that. I thought this was going to be detached, but I guess I was wrong. I'm not going to fiddle around with it too much. Before we go any further, my suggestion for the head is not to pull back. Do not pull back with it. Just grab him by the, like so, and then pull. Pop. Yeah, you want to make sure that's still there. If it's not, you're in trouble. You can see right here. Now, also, I thought this was, see? Everything here is modular. That's pretty cool. I like that. But here's the problem I have with this. Good. This guy, you can bring him down just a touch. Yeah, like so. And we'll bring this guy around. Like so. Yeah. Kind of like the crisscross action going or two. Pop back in. Doesn't pop like the other ones do, like the head, but you'll you'll feel it when you put shit in. Yeah, a lot of sharp edges. No wonder why this is for for older collectors because this is really ah. So let's put his head back on. Put him back on his waist. You can see the waist of ball ball joint. You could take them tunic out, the line cloth, whatever you want to call it, and push it in like so. Come on, there we go. You want to hear that pop. Here's the hands, like so. And I would make sure this is facing this way. So you could just do that. So you don't accidentally chip here. I might chip something off. You know, like this happened here, kind of a bummer. All right, so let's take a look at some of the accessories that came with these figures. You can see Kato, we're gonna go with him first. I got a lot of his accessories on him. Got the two straps here. You can put cross, you know, put them crossways. 
got the two stores. They're different sizes. And the only issue I have is some of these figures can't do the, uh, the you know, can't cross their arms too much to put a pose like that. That's kind of silly, but, you yeah, know, well, again, the cost would rise if you have to put more articulation on them. That's the way it is. But he does come with these shoulder guards right here, as you can see. Nice copper look to it. And the hammer, and some of the weapons here are modular themselves. You can see, got the hammer right here. And pop the hammer out like so. And you got another attachment right here. Like so. You got one one-sided hammer. And we'll just turn that around. Not too shabby, I like that. So Kato got a good accessory. Urzok comes with a big old staff right here. Yeah. Right here. Not too much in the way of paint, but it'll do. And he comes with other stuff as well. He comes with an axe right here that's also modular. Pick this out right here. That's one part. So, you got right here, you have that peg and you have this other piece. Yeah, snap it on like that and you got a dual bladed axe. Not too shabby. He also comes with the, his own uh, shoulder guards and a sword. Ooh. Ooh, I'm liking the sword. You, you'll see why in a minute. Hopefully you can. Right up front. You can see it got some really good wear on it. That is... I did not notice that. I'm going to have to switch his weapon. Ooh. Nice paintwork. You can see. Put him right on his shoulder. Not too... Not too bad. In fact, I'll put on one right now. Okay, and you can see that's what he looks like with one of his shoulder guards to two. It is articulation like that. So you can put your arm up like so. Not bad. The This guy right here comes with a bronze shield and a part of the axe that he comes with. And he also comes with a regular bronze shield. I think this is where the bronze comes from, not really the, the actual color of the, the figure itself, but the color of his weapons, I, I suppose. I don't know. Now the last is Astreon. And here is Astreon with this shield here, and it's a good fit. As you can see, it comes with a really wide grip right here, and it is also detachable. Put it right here. As you can see, there's a peg on there. And put them on so. And he comes with also his own shield, his uh, own sh shoulders, but I don't like putting them on. I, I, it's, it just seems a bit of a pain to put on. I'll give it a shot. I'll do it, I'll do it right now. His shoulders are different. They're not as uh, protruding as the other ones. Almost like the, the Legion Builder dwarf. And I believe you put it on like so. Got to really tighten it right there. It's a really snug tight fit there. And put it on like that. You know what? I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm actually liking the shoulders now. So, figures keeps on giving. Just shows you more and more stuff and surprises you. Now, if only this thing would have just... The only problem I see is that these things are really hard to put in and you don't want to force it too much. Yeah. Also, just wanted to point out that you have Astion's ankle. So, more of hooves and everything else like that. Doesn't have that much of an ankle pivot as the other ones. So, just pointing that out there if you do decide to get an Astion or something like Astion. So, yeah. Not bad at all. Now, the things about these, a couple of things does feel kind of loose at times, but it compensates somehow. And I like that. That's, that's, that's a sign of a good figure. It compensates for itself. I unfortunately wanted one other figure. I'm going to talk to you about it right now. And I'll just shoot from the, the, the hip right here. And this figure, I'm going to try to put him, put a photo of him right here. That 
is Vitus. V-I-T-U-S. I wanted this figure from Big Bad Toy Store and I was hesitant for it because they said it, his packaging was damaged but they're still charging $50. I was looking at why? Why are you going to charge me $50 for a damaged package? The damaged package itself is not a big deal for me. But, you know, if it's got a part that's damaged, you know, bring it down a bit. I'm not saying bring it down $10 or anything. I'm like $2, $3 maybe. And it seems fair. So I emailed Big Bad Toys when they got back to me. And as soon as they got back to me, I was like, okay, fine. I'll, just, I'll get Vitus. He was sold out. Yeah. Vitus. It's gone forever. And I'm going to talk to you more about the Kickstarter that's on right now from Four Horsemen Studios' Mythic Legion. It's titled Mythic Legion, Advent of Decay. Mythic Legion's Advent of Decay is the second Kickstarter campaign by Four Horsemen Studios. It expands on the cast of characters, which includes females, such as female knights, female orcs, Female vampires, female barbarians. They have slender body molds for men. So it's not as buff and muscular. They can cater toward, more towards elves and vampires. They even have anthropomorphic creatures. Including, not limited to, a boar, a cat-like creature, and a whole slew of other creatures. That doesn't have a specific label. Where you can find these figures is on the Kickstarter at first off. If that's over, you could try in about a couple of months to pre-order on storehorseman.com. And if that doesn't work out, you can always try Big Bad Toy Store. But there is a caveat. If you miss Store Horseman, you have to go into Big Bad Toy Store, which gets even higher. If you make Big, Big Bad Toy Store, you have to go to the secondary market, which is ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculously priced. So, if you really like these figures, you like these molds, I get them as early as you can. So, is this line worth it? Despite the fact that you have great sculpt work, great character design, great paint job, great articulation, the fact that it's modular, personally, I think it's good, but it can be great. And the only thing that I think is holding it back is the price point and certain the wrist uh, articulation on as well. It's, yeah, I wish it could be a little bit better, but the price is where it hurts. Now, I've read somewhere that they are considering maybe doling down the paintwork so they could have a lower cost, kind of like the Legion Builder. And I hope they do that because I think they could, they have something on their hand. Especially someone doing Toy Fair, I think Pixel Dan's interview, I'll have a link down, down here. The head of War Horseman did something that would have been so good. If we want good figures, we have to put the, the money into it. My opinion, I'm satisfied. I am satisfied. I'm not greatly satisfied. I'm not over the moon with them, but I want to be. That's why I also put down uh, the second King story because I have a lot of promise there. This is why this industry needs people like Full Horseman Studios. I back this Kickstarter because it shows promise. It shows something can be done with people that have passion for this industry, that have passion for action figures and scope booking. I want to support that. And that to me is worth it.